family, friends, and fans to Karma Lately. We're going to have a little bit of fun today. I recently posted a video uh, about the whole FTC and COPPA thing. I am still here. A lot of YouTubers are still here. We have some big decisions that we have to make before 2020, and we will be making them in the interim. I do not plan on stopping my videos. And I also wanted to say thank you to Don't Make Don't Wake Me Up, a, subs a recent subscriber that commented on my video regarding the FTC and COPPA, giving me feedback, reassurance, and support. I really do need it. Um, and this is what we're talking about. This video today is actually child attractive. Uh, when I click on child attractive, I'm not going to be in the future once all of this happens, 2020, and the regulations are set. I'm not going to be able to um, receive comments on this particular video. And it is child attractive because we're going to be working with paint and painting and just teaching you guys some of the basics. But it's not fair that I won't be able to get the feedback that you guys need. Um, sorry, I won't be able to get the feedback that I need from you guys. So once again, thank you so much. Don't wake me up. Thank you to all my recent subscribers. And um, let's just get right into this video. So I recently said that um, I have a, a journal. I have this um, junk journal. I haven't done a flip through of this junk journal just yet. It is one of my favorites. It's actually a gift and I, I've been a little hesitant to give it away. But this junk journal is, uh, this is hand painted and it is recycled. It's a um, Trader Joe's bag, actually. And I painted, I mod podged some tissue onto the brown paper bag, the Trader Joe's bag, and I hand painted all of this. And all of these colors, except for the black and the white, all of these colors uh, I mixed myself. Oh, and except for the red. I mixed all of this myself. And there's a page on here, actually the first page. I showed this page to a friend and she was like, hmm, that's beautiful, but did you print it out? <laughs> and I was like, uh, no, I hand painted this. And I am proud to say that I mixed each and every one of those colors. So we're going to do, and so this, this is parchment paper and, uh, no need to gesso parch parchment paper. It's awesome. I painted it and then Mod Podged it. And when I say Mod Podge, guys, um, for those of you who don't know what Mod Podge is, Mod Podge is a combination of two to three parts glue and one part water. I tend to do three parts glue, one part water, and um, I would like to put some polycrylic varnish into it to make it a little shinier, uh, but I haven't experimented with that yet. So I haven't done my Mod Podge video yet because uh, my homemade Mod Podge video yet because I want to do it with uh, polycrylic. So that's what I did. I painted it and then Mod Podged and that's what gives it that leather, that faux leather feel. And there's so many videos. Um, I'm going to do a video as well as to how I achieve these two different leather feels. So this one is more like a very rustic textured leather. And this one is just like a very smooth leather. Okay, and so, but today what our focus is, and I will be doing a flip through of this particular um, book, just not today. Today we're going to focus on the colors. We're going to try to recreate this, maybe with a Thanksgiving concept, maybe like a Thanksgiving vibe or something. But the, sorry, and my, <laughs> my art corner is right by the window. I like to have it here because it's, um, I get a lot of natural light. But it also means that my videos can sometimes be a little bit noisy. So my apologies for that. We're going to start with the basics and then I'm going to show you some clean parchment paper and we're going to work from there. So the basics are that you only need three colors to make virtually all, almost all of the colors. Um, actually, you need three colors to make all the colors in the rainbow. Be white is the only color you can't make from these three. But this good old white paint 
is going to um, give you variations of all of the colors that you make within the rainbow. And so will black. Although I can make black with these three colors. So we're going to just get started. I have a couple of different uh, things. If you guys want to join me. Also, I have two different kinds of blues. And depending on the, the kind of blue that you use, obviously, there's going to be a difference. So this blue has <clears throat> the difference between these two blues is that this one has more of a white, has more white added into the pigment than this one. And so there's, it's fun to see the difference in the uh, variations, but you don't need to do that. You can just get pure blue. Um, this is not even a pure blue, but you, this is all I have at the moment. <laughs> and I guess I am somewhat of a frugal uh, crafter. I'm not interested and I don't know if it's because I'm not a millionaire. I don't know how I'll be when I become a millionaire, but I still feel like we should a, find ways to upcycle, find ways to recycle, and then also challenge ourselves to what we have. It can't always be, well, I ran out of blue. I ran out of the blue that I need. So now let me go run to the store. No, like, okay, I don't have the pure, pure blue. Um, uh, this is a variation of it. And so is this, but this is what I have. And so I can challenge myself to make it what I want it to be with the white and with the black. So here's the situation. We're gonna, there's a couple of things that I want you guys to have on hand. Um, I want you to have your paint. So you should have three colors, red, yellow, and blue. And then you should also add to that. If you don't have black, I'm gonna show you how to make black. But if you have black, that would be great. Black and white, okay? And have some, tape this is just regular um masking tape i got this towel i prefer using this than to always have paper towels but i also use paper towels as well so this is my main gig and then i've got this little canister with water this is where i keep my brushes i've got these little tin cans they were part of a, they were for a party for my daughter one time and we just saved them and i said you know what i can use these for my paints so i got quite a few of these depending on what i decide to do i don't know if i'm going to use them all but you have this and then you just want to make sure that when you have paint left over you want to seal it so you can put saran wrap and then saran wrap again if you want and then put it in like a ziplock or put it in a sealed box somewhere with like a cool temperature not too hot and um you can preserve your paint in that in this particular um in like a little can or like aluminum or whatever you can you can you can preserve it for a couple of weeks uh, maybe two or three weeks depending on how much paint if it's too little paint then it might dry out but if you have enough paint in here you can you can preserve it for a little while so you have that and then um i have this little thing here where it's like i dab i, I put this in here to kind of just dab and mix more colors and variations of more colors so i have that this is the fun part i also have different tools that i use to actually paint to get the different um results and so i've got all these different ones. This one's nice and soft. This one's pretty rough. And some of these are beat up, but that's okay. Um, this one's really uh, pointy. Oops. This is actually an eyebrow pen, uh, an eyebrow brush, but I stole it from my daughter. <laughs> this one is also a little bit rough. Actually, this one could use a little bit more water because I think it still has some stuff on it. Um, and then all these other small ones for finer details. Since I work a lot with small things, I tend to have a lot of that, but I also need to invest in some bigger brushes. So that I will be doing soon. Um, my sponge brush got messed up, and so I need to invest in some bigger brushes. So I got these, and then I have these sponges. So this, these two came as part of a paint set that I bought years ago. Also bought this at the artist 
and Craftsman Supply Store in Park Slope. So these I got there. And this I also stole from my daughter. This is like a beauty blender. This is for makeup and foundation and all that. This works perfectly for your distress ink. Ooh, this is so good for your distress ink. Especially because if you want to get corners, you can like do this and then, you know what I mean? You can do it on... Um, it's like got a nice little pointy corner and then you can also work on the sides and then you've got this whole area here that you can work with so I love these um this is I love this and then this one I think this came in like a, a jewelry box and this was like where the jewelry jewelry was was resting I'm actually never I never used this one but I'm excited to use it and that's what you can do you can go around the house and see what you have um that you can use. You can also use a brush. I, I stole this one from my daughter as well. <laughs> it's okay, she's over it. And you can use, you know, your blush brush for certain little wistful effects and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna use it today, but I'll leave it here as well. So that is what I would like for you guys to do. Just gather some of your your uh, materials, see what you can get. And the tape is simply going to be because I am bringing this piece of parchment paper and parchment paper is what you would use for baking like cookies and brownies and all that. I'm just looking for my ruler, not that one. Ruler, oh here. I'm going to measure how big this is and I'm going to use this for a journal, for a cover for a journal. So we've got 23 across and 18, so 18 deep and 23 long or 23 across. So I'm down with that. So I'm just going to tape it down so that when I'm painting it does not move. And actually, we're not doing that yet. I'm going to show you guys where I'm like anxious to get started on painting. And I'm like, where are my colors? I have no colors here so far. So, so I'm going to do little small. Do I want to do small samples? Actually, I'm going to do a couple of big portions for the colors that I really need and smaller portions for the ones that I don't need. So the first color that I always need, <laughs> always need this color, is brown. And so the kind of brown that I like, I, I like almost an even amount of both yellow and red. This one comes out thick. Now this is a much better quality. This is a much higher quality basics uh, from Liquitex. Much higher quality than um, this one, but that's fine. We're gonna work with what we have. Now, which brush am I going to use to mix this all up? Hmm. Okay. So I don't have, I have a bin somewhere with all of my mixing and all of my, but you know what? Maybe I have some wood. Give me one second. Okay. I'm back. I found this. And since it's so long, I think what I'm going to do is take my easy cutter is like 7,000 years old. I'm going to try to cut it right in the middle. And since the easy cutter is struggling right now, I'm going to flip it over. Ooh, the easy cutter is not, is not easy today. It's just not. God. Okay. I need a new easy cutter, guys. I really do. Um, 
Okay, so now I got two little palettes and we're going to work with that. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. I think I need more yellow. We're going to get a beautiful orange. Oh my God, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> it's like, I always know what it's going to look like, but I get excited every time to see the color. Now, I know that I want this to be a little more orange and less red. So I'm going to add a little more yellow to it. And this will last me, like if I don't use all of this today, this will last me a couple of weeks so I can use this for different projects. Still kind of red, but we're, I don't want to waste any more yellow. So well, I'll just do one drop, just one. And this is a this, this is a personal decision. You might be happy with the reddish with the reddish cuz then the brown that you want is going to then the the brown that you get might be a little more rusty. And and that's cool. I'm looking for a specific kind of brown that I already know I want. All right. Well, I can't get it more orange than this right now because I used a lot of red like a little silly goose. So red, sorry, <laughs> red and yellow. I'm really not supposed to use this kind of red. This is not the pure red either. So whatever, but I'm supposed to use red and yellow to make orange. And that's what we just did. Now you can make different kinds of oranges. You can make an orange that's more red or you can make an orange that's more yellow. But there we have orange. Then... We're going to take black. This is another good um, brand, Amsterdam, all acrylics, whatever, standard series. This is another good one. So I, re I definitely, I highly recommend these two, the Liquitex and the Amsterdam, more so the Liquitex. Okie dokie. I'm not um, this like well-renowned painter who's like knows everything that I, that she knows, but I do have some experience uh, whatever limited experience I have, I know what I know uh, that works for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop open this. Uh, this um, sometimes you get this clump over here. Kind of don't want that, and it's got new paint and old paint on it. So I'm gonna put it on the paper towel, and immediately. My hands are dirty. So that's why I'm like working with my nail pot. My nail polish is like run out. So I have to like take it off and redo my nails. So I figured before I redo my nails, let me work with all this paint, get my hands nice and dirty, and then I'll remove the nail polish. So <laughs> that's why you're seeing my nails all beat up. Anyway, running a little low on this black, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put those drops. I actually didn't intend to put that last drop. Let's see what happens. Nice. Okay, so I got a nice brown here, but it's not the color that I want. Um, but that's, I already knew that because I was going to add some white to this. I just wanted to, so these are the steps. I made the orange and yellow. I mean, I made the red and R, uh, yellow to make orange. Then I added a little bit of black just a few drops because black is extremely powerful and you want to mix this up really nicely okay and there you see the kind of brown i have now i did want it to have a little more yellow in it i did so i'm taking an l on that one but um I think I'm just going to drop it because I don't want to waste any 
paintbrush on this. So I'm just going to do a little drop or two. God. Guys, no. That's not the way that was supposed to happen. <sighs> no, it's not supposed to be this much white. Oh, let me see if I can get rid of some of this white. Oh my god, no, no, not at all. Ugh. Oh. It was supposed to be drops, guys. Uh, well, no hay mal que por bien no venga. And in Spanish, that's a Spanish saying, and it means... It means... Um, there's no bad that doesn't bring good. <laughs> so, um, all right. Uh, I don't want to get too crazy, but, um, yeah, this is, uh, what's good about this? You know what? It was a big boo-boo, but at the same time, look at this pretty brown that, um, I just made. You see what I mean? Like mistakes happen. Um, and I didn't intend to have this much white in it, but, oh. Look at that pretty, pretty brown. It actually happened perfectly. So <laughs> I'll be honest with you. That was that was not planned. Not not supposed to happen that way at all. But I'm I'm really glad it did. This is a really pretty brown. This is a super super pretty brown. I like it a lot. So it's um i mean it's it's a light very very light brown it's like a it's like a tan it's like a like a cream like a not cream like a like a beigey tan so pretty let's do a little quick uh clean up here hands are <laughs> becoming something else so that's why i was like oh i am definitely not going to do my nails anytime soon all right this is a great surface this is just contact this is the um, decorative contact paper that i put on top of poster board and i have about four of them right now so that i can always give you guys like a different background so it's just contact paper until i can um get something different for you so this is our first color that we got there and maybe now I will do the exact I'll do the color that I originally wanted um this time I'm doing I'm starting with the yellow and then I'm gonna add some red to it because I want yellow to be the main guy here and Yeah. Still even more yellow. I was a little I, I keep being a little heavy handed with the uh, with the red there, but this one has more yellow than the other. It looks like for this measurement you might want to just have like a couple of drops of the red. Um, it all depends. I definitely want this one to be more. So when it's here, you can't really see it. But when I put it in the light, now you can see all that yellow. This is the yellow that I originally wanted. See that? Oh, that's a pure orange. That's like as pure of an orange as it can get. I'm going to try to keep it over here so you can see the color. 
see if I can move my work area to face the light a little. So you guys are not lost. All right. <clears throat> that is orange. That's the orange I wanted. And now <laughs> let's be careful about drops. Don't be lazy. Don't do what I did. You want to get a brush and actually put it, you know, or a scooper or a mixer and actually take a doppel and put it in there. Don't pour like I just did because that's what happens. <laughs> I'm just going to put one drop here. Less is more. Ooh, it starts to look green. It starts to look green, which is so cool. But then when you mix it, mix it, mix it, you keep mixing it. Like if I wanted to, I would stop right here and use this. It looks like an olive, like a beautiful olive green. So pretty. The more you mix it up, the more the color starts to change. the more it starts looking like brown. And once you're here, you can you can put um, more red, more yellow once you're in this place, um, depending on what it is that you want. It still looks pretty olivey, but What I was going to do before, <laughs> I was going to just take a little bit of white and just lighten the color a little bit. Not a lot. I'm doing it again, guys. Being lazy. Sorry. I did not learn from my most recent mistake. All right. And I think I want a little more red on this. And a little more black so remember I only put one drop of black before just to not play too many games but now now you got that now I do want to make some green since I love green. Now this one already has white. Hmm. I'm gonna leave this one alone. And we're gonna make some green now. some of this all right I had to clean up a little bit um, I found some more I found some of these popsicle sticks I just cut the ends off because I was working on them for another project last year and um, I got another one of these and I think this time I might just do that. <sighs> Sorry, easy cutter, but you need some 
sharpening or something. <laughs> All right, let's get started with this mixing. Ah, this one's a lot easier. Right away, you're getting um, your green. It's like it's becoming like a teal, which I wanted because I wanted to give it like a turquoise feel. So I usually start with teal and then I add some white. And now you have to decide what um you have to decide what color you want like i can add more blue to this or i could add more yellow to this to give it the the look that i the pigment that i want and i think what i'm gonna do is add a little more yellow And this is like a really, um, it's cadmium yellow. It's like that real school bus yellow. So in the light, you can see it a little bit better. It's becoming, it's becoming what um, I want, but I'm going to experiment with this blue. Um, and this blue is achieved by just adding white to your pure blue to make it like a sky, like a skyish blue. Okay. Let's see, let's work this a little more. It's becoming something else, guys, because I added too much green. So that means now I'm going to pour. Because I really didn't want it, I didn't want it to be so green. I wanted it to be like an even keel, but still a turquoise-ish kind of. And that green, that blue isn't working. So... Cool, cool, cool. Okay, I'm a lot happier now. It gets scary sometimes because um, <clears throat> sometimes your brain doesn't, um, even though you're used to mixing colors, sometimes you want to see something and you forget that There's an order to things and everything needs to be done in a certain way. But I'm happy with that color. I'm happy with this one. I'm not 100% happy with this one, actually. I'm not. Um, I think it needs a little more black. I thought that it was going to look differently, but it doesn't. And I'm wondering... Hmm. Huh. I laugh if what I need is um, more yellow. <laughs> Seems to be the theme here. Yellow. Hmm. 
Hmm. I think that yellow and that red just don't want to come together for me. They're not giving me what I'm asking them for. So... More red. Let's see if more red does the trick. Yay! <laughs> more red did the trick. Yes! You know, I wanted it to have like a yellowish hue. And so I'm glad that this mistake happened because... You can see more of a yellowish hue here but to achieve the red that the brown that i want i actually did need i was right originally i did need more red it's just that i used in comparison to the yellow i just used way too much red <clears throat> now we're talking suckers yeah um that's the brown I was looking for. Yay! See, now I'm happy. Okay, so... So we've got these colors here. And then we've got white here. What other color could I do? Um, now we could have... If we're doing like a Thanksgiving themed thing. Not really Thanksgiving, but like that kind of vibe I'm gonna put a little bit of this here just pure for later um, I'm gonna put a little bit of black a little bit of blue a little bit of red and we have some white over here Here are my hands. <laughs> but um, acrylic paint, it's 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 a plus and a it's it's um it's great that acrylic paint dries quickly. You just have to make sure you any kind of changes and decisions that you want to make, you do those right away. Now here we have a nice acrylic sheet. We're going to this was not supposed to happen and I was trying to put everything away but I didn't do such a great job but that's okay let's um dab that And the fun part is it happened on the other side. All right, don't stress. And these are like things, how many times have I told you guys that things are never perfect? I want to know how many times I've told you that. Um, do I like the fact that that happened? No, I don't. I don't like it. I don't know where to put this. I think this is safer over here. Okay. All right. So what you're going to do... Some more ASMR for you guys. <laughs> you want to do it two to three times. Be careful because the more you do this, the weaker the parchment paper gets and then the more likeliness of it ripping which in this video after all these mistakes I wouldn't be surprised if it ripped on me but I 
Okay. So now that you did that, it's going to be a little less than the 23 across and the um, 18 deep. Um, it's going to be a little less than that because you wrinkled it. So it shrunk a little bit. But that's cool. So this is our work surface. What's wonderful about parchment paper, you do not need to uh, gesso it. You can if you want to, but you don't need to. I um, want to show you guys something that I did. This is parchment paper on the T-Mobile bag. And this is going to be a book. I just have to paint the um, outer part and the inner corners and then put some backing on it but this is going to be a journal and this is uh recycled and this is parchment paper this is the same one same concept with the uh the trader joe's bag i showed you guys earlier this was what was left over so i'm going to make it a little mini journal and so i cut this one out this will be a mini journal but it's from the same that same project so you can recycle within a recycle project <laughs> that's cool but that's going to be for another show uh for another episode so now we get into our creative process and i'm going to try to bring the camera down just a taste so that you have more of the work area than anything else and i wouldn't worry too much about all that black and all this um it's on the other side and well this one isn't but all of that will be covered once we make certain decisions so i think i'm going to start with this brush it's very this uh, sponge it's very porous and i'm going to use it to put the main color that i want originally i wanted this color to be the main one this rich brown but i changed my mind because Destiny asked that I use this one. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this. I'm going to dip it. And I'm going to start dispersing it. And uh, I might be a little heavy handed right now. There might be a lot that you're seeing. But... I'm doing that on purpose so that, and I don't want to go all the way out to all the ends because I don't need to. Those ends are not going to show on the journal. They're going to be covered with whatever inner lining I decide to put for the book. So I'm I'm quite all right um, not going all the way to the end. So I'm using the parts that I was that I went heavy-handed. I'm using those parts. To kind of just give you a little bit of, I'm using it to dab more on the area. And I don't want to paint the whole thing. That's not what I want. In order to create the, um, the effect, I, I already covered the black. In order to create the effect that you want, the effect that I did previously, you want to just do it in, in certain areas, but it is understood that this is going to be the main color. That's understood. There's no question about that. So it starts to look a little bit like a map. And, um, See if you can see this, what I'm doing down here. Starts to look like a little map. Looks like continents or countries or clusters of islands. 
and um, that's exactly what I want. And this is, um, I don't know if it's going to be a Thanksgiving vibe. You know, let's see what happens. I, I, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just like, I'm doing this with you guys right now as you see me. So I don't have any plans. <laughs> and uh, art sometimes plans things for you. So I think I'm happy with that. Yep, I'm happy with that. That's my main color. That's the color that I'm like, well, you know what? Hold on. I think I still want the color to be more present. This is the color that you're saying, hello, I'm, I'm guiding everyone here. I'm the one leading the parade. And certain areas, um, so this is good. I think this is good for now. Um, that's how that looks. And I'm cool with it. Sweet. Okay, so I, I kind of um, cleaned it as best as I could so she could be ready for another color. What color do I want to do now? Let's get into the dark brown this time. Yeah. Going to dabble in a little bit of the dark. And so now what I want to do, I actually want to go into the areas that don't have so much paint. Those in-between areas. Because I don't want to cover what I already did. I don't. And I think what I'll do from now, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to speed up this video. I have just one regret and that is that I added the white so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go back in um, this time I'm gonna use this brush this uh, sponge I'm gonna take my main color and I don't know if I'm gonna take away all of the white but um, I don't think that I want this much white involved. I don't want it to be so um, powerful. This one over here, this one over here, um, it's a little stubborn. So what I think I'm going to do for that one, I'm going to take a little piece of Bounty, the Quaker Picker Upper. <laughs> oh, Bounty. Bounty's not paying me to promote them. Nobody is. Um, I promote people um, and artists because if it were if they're good then why not give them the credit but anyway um i'm gonna clean this off a little bit too i really should have more um 
paper on deck, but now it's gone. And I feel a lot more comfortable about that. And now I want to weather some of the 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 um the turquoise as well. It's already feeling very like, ooh, like very um, leathery. But what I want to try now, I want to take my red and I would like to mix it with a little, a little white. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of white. that's a pure pink i'm going to take the other end of this i'm going to add some yellow to that okay and now i'm gonna mix that in I'm going to take the whole <laughs> yellow. And I really shouldn't be doing this over the painting. So I've had enough mistakes for today, to be quite frank with you. Um, I don't want any more mistakes. Add some of that yellow in there. Some more white. And now what we're getting is like a, like a mame, like a peachy like a peachy color that's what's happening here it's like a little peachy I would like to add some of that to this painting I just don't know if it's gonna be a mistake so I'm gonna put very little and to be honest hmm. I'm gonna put very little in a designated area and see if um, see if that's gonna if that's gonna work I'm gonna take a small brush and where do I see this going where do I see it Some areas will have more than others. That's okay. You want that. And then I think I also want more of the brown. Just a little more of this brown. I think as much as I would like to do more to it, sometimes you do have to pull back because if you don't, um, more mistakes happen, more things happen, and then things that you can't fix it happens to me all the time. Now, these colors I'm really in love with, and I'm so glad that I have a lot of them. But as you can see, I made these colors. 
I tried not to do the edges on purpose. I didn't want to go all the way to the edge, actually. Not necessary. Ooh, like, with very few supplies and very few colors, you can certainly do a lot. This is what we did. Now, I am going to dry it, and I'm going to mod podge it which means i'm going to apply the mixture of glue and water okay guys so um please catch the next video where i turn this into leather with the mod podge so um please like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next one peace